it should just be a matter of grabbing that and snapping it off. Today marks day seven since I've been wearing two new watches, one on each wrist for the double wrist week challenge issued by Skylar Santana. So we're gonna go through what happened over the last one week of double wristing. And of course, I will also be providing my seven day review of each of these two interesting timepieces. Oh, and there is a small chance that the package that just arrived today will allow me to modify this watch. So stick around to the end. <laughs> So, who else was involved in the Double Wrist Week Challenge? Of course, we had Skylar Santana from over on Watch Crunch and a bunch of the homies there as well. We also had Red Wyvern and a bunch of the Discord members partaking, so a big thank you to you guys. And we even had Fratellini from YouTube, an absolute OG who's been a viewer since I had like 50 subscribers. So, thanks to everyone who participated, and I'd love to discuss our findings below. But how did I feel about wearing two watches? Well, first of all, uh, overall, I did find it pretty cool. Um, just overall, having a watch on both wrists. I will say that uh, I did at first find myself barely checking the right wrist just because it wasn't habit. But over the one week, I did find myself checking the right wrist more. I did also uh, turn off the digital time here and set it over to the date like so, so that I was more encouraged to check my, my, uh, my right wrist as well. Um, so that was pretty cool. I did find though that when I was using my computer mouse, I was not used to having this buckle here. So that kind of got in the way. Um, and also speaking of that, I also did find myself bumping it into things just because I'm used to my right wrist being bare. So I bet you're wondering if anyone noticed that I was double wristing. Well, one person did and it nearly caused me to fail this challenge. So I'll start by saying that none of my friends at volleyball noticed I was double wristing. No one in public noticed, or at least if they did, they didn't say anything. But the person who noticed was my wife, of course. Now, the first thing she said when she saw my two watches on was, oh my God, what are you doing? We better not be going out in public like that. Now, I did try and reassure her, you know, it's just for a challenge. This isn't going to be a permanent thing, but she was really not happy. I had a dinner with my in-laws coming up and also a lunch with my family, and she was really not happy. She actually wanted me to take these off and I would have failed the challenge. Remember, you have to wear them loud and proud. So look, I can understand that. I can see why some people might be embarrassed or even you know feel secondhand embarrassment but personally I don't care at all you know I'm the one wearing them and um, I didn't have a problem with it so let me know guys what do you think would you feel embarrassed to be wearing two watches or to be seen with someone wearing two watches personally I don't think it's that big of a deal now, the last thing I'll say about double wristing is that I believe that it is important to have a variety of different watches on your wrist. I'm very pleased I went with an interesting digital and also an analog. Otherwise, you've really got no reason to have two different watches on if they're exactly the same. So a lot of you might own an Apple watch. I would say that's a great candidate to have on one wrist in case you want to make payments or have notifications. And then on the other wrist, you can have another timepiece that you just enjoy the look of. By the way, guys, I wanted to give a huge thank you to Skylar again for this challenge. It was a fantastic eye-opening experience. And I do think that I will be double wristing, not every day, but every now and then when I feel it's appropriate going forward. So I'm leaving a link to Skylar's channel just here. He's actually done a mod video that I think you'll really enjoy on some uh, reversing polarizers on watches. So I know you guys like watch modding, so make sure you check him out. Now let's get into the reviews, starting with the Pope watch. For some reason, I felt an inexplicable holiness wearing this watch for the last week. Any ideas why? Let's start with what I liked about the MQ24 Pope watch. First of all, this thing is dead simple to operate and to set up. You pop the crown out, you twist it, you lock it in and it's set, and that's all there is to it. You look at it, there's no distractions, it tells you the time and is exactly what you would expect it to be. It's also water resistant, I wore this in the shower every day and it had no issues whatsoever. Overall, I really liked the simplicity and elegance of this watch so much that I can't wait to be wearing this more often just by itself on my left wrist as usual. And the elegant design actually also caught the attention of my wife who asked if she can borrow this watch and wear it sometimes saying that it suits her style. So I'm really happy to have her on board with the Pope watch. 
And by the way, the Casio Pope watch is one of the cheapest Casio watches I have ever seen on Amazon. So I will be leaving a link for you below if you'd like to check it out and see for yourself. Oh, and we need to put the Casio vs. Swatch Pope Watch debate to rest right now. In my last video, I mentioned that I wasn't sure whether the Pope wears a Casio or a Swatch. I had a bunch of people chime in with helpful comments. I will admit some of it was conflicting, but I think I've got a feel for the deal about what the Pope actually wears. So, apparently there is actual proof that the watch worn by the Pope was a Swatch, which he then sold, and there is a link for the auction, which I will also leave in the description if you'd like to check it out. The swatch owned by the Pope was auctioned off. Now, Media Player left a comment saying that after he sold this one, he bought a Casio, which is the one that he has worn since. So let me know what you think. Does this add up? I'd love to hear it. Hello, Bubble. Would you like to be like the Pope? Let's put his watch on. Oh yeah, look at that. You look 10 times holier already, Bubble. Bubble reminds you to like the video if you're enjoying it so far. So I did have a few minor nitpicks about the Pope watch, so let's get into the things that I didn't like. First of all, I found that the strap was kind of small, um, as you just saw by the fact that it can fit on my dog, Bubble. You know, if you have a larger wrist, there's no way this is going to fit you. So I have a six and a half inch wrist. And even on that, I think I was getting about, you know, I think there was only about four slots left on the strap. Yeah, there you go. So, you know, uh, definitely not for the larger wristed folk. Next up, I feel that a screen protector would have been nice, um, you know, because it's just the standard sort of acrylic. I don't think I've scratched it. Let's give it a proper polish and have a look. But um, either way, um, I have actually ordered a screen protector um, on AliExpress, which I'll also leave a link for you below if you'd like to pick one up. But actually that does look pretty good for surviving for one week. Next up, I found that the hand alignment on the Pope watch was pretty poor. Um, as you might notice as the second hand ticks around here, see it's not really lining up with those markers. It always kind of overshoots it a little bit. Maybe there's a way to adjust this, but I understand it's a very affordable watch, but it would have been uh, really nice if those lined up properly. My final dislike of the Pope watch is that there is no way to tell the time in the dark because it does not have any loom on the hands or face. If we shut off the light, you can kind of see what I mean, but for the most part, when I was double wristing, I had to use the humpback to tell the time in the dark. Actually, there was one other thing. Over the week that I wore this, I did find that my wrist was getting really itchy. So I don't know if it's just because my right wrist is not used to wearing a watch, or maybe if you're a Pope watch owner, can you confirm, does your, does your wrist get itchy while wearing this? Now let's talk about this absolute beast, the humpback. And we're gonna start with the elephant in the room. In my unboxing video, which is here if you missed it, I had been referring to this watch as the Imperial Pilot because I thought that name sounded cool. Now I'll admit guys, I am not a huge uh, Star Wars junkie. I think it's cool, but I don't really know all the terms. A lot of you guys actually let me know in the comments that this symbol is actually the Rebel Alliance symbol from Star Wars not the Imperial one. So a few of you, look, I'm really happy. A few of you said, yeah, let's keep going with the Imperial pilot, but a few of you had other suggestions. So I think I'm just gonna concede and say it makes a lot more sense for this watch to be referred to as the Rebel pilot. So that's hereby what I'm gonna be referring to this watch by. So what do I like about the Rebel pilot by Humpback? First of all, this thing looks bad ass. Just look at how cool it is with all of these dials and gauges. It really just looks like a super cool watch to wear. Next up, I really like that this watch has a temperature sensor. How cool is that? I never would have thought of including that on a digital watch. Though we will come back to this in the negative section, so stick around for that. The backlight for this watch lasts exactly three seconds, as you can see here. But one thing I found interesting is that you can actually combo it by pressing it a second time within the three seconds, and it will extend the duration up to three seconds from when you pressed it. And this is interesting because it's not something that can be done with G-Shocks. If I press that to start it, I think I've only got it on one and a half seconds, but look, if I press it a second time, it didn't matter. It doesn't keep the combo going. So really cool for Humpback to have incorporated that. Next up, I really like that the stopwatch mode, which we can toggle to like so, uh, actually has three digits. I've never seen that before. It's actually one one thousandth of a second. You know, all of my Casios, they've only ever had two. Take the F91, for example. Ready? 
check it out. Two uh, of the mini uh, seconds there. But one thing I'm wondering, is this legit? So what I might actually do is put this in slow-mo so we can test. Here it is in slow motion. I also really appreciate the flexibility to have whatever we want displayed on the A1 and A2 dials. For example, see the little arrow below seconds here? That's because I have this set to reflect the seconds of the digital time, but if I press this button, the A2 dial now reflects my alarm time, and if I press it again, we can also have it showing dual time. I also really appreciate that there is a small amount of loom on the A1 dial, as you can see. It is quite negligible, but hey, it's better than nothing. I also like that this is rated for three bars of water resistance, despite having a supposed little grill there. Um, I tested this in the shower each day, and even one day fully submerged it in the water of a bath, and there was no damage to this watch. I quite like this little bottom left subdial with the arrow which toggles between all the different modes. We have time, date, alarm, dual time, and stopwatch, although let's face it, that arrow does not line up very well with that. But I wanted to show you the alarm mode because this one is really unique and one of my favorites. Let's have a listen to the sound. Very unique and refreshing. It's almost like a little chirping noise, and I found it quite effective for waking me up in the morning. By the way, Paul over on Facebook showed me this all steel variation of the humpback, which I think looks absolutely fantastic. And both of these versions of the humpback guys are extremely affordable, so I will be leaving a link for you below if you'd like to check them out. Make sure that you are a subscriber so that you don't miss my next watch review. Now let's get into the things that I disliked about the humpback. I really dislike the way this strap fits on the wrist. Excuse my hairy arms, but look at that. Look at the way that it overhangs. It's just not ideal whatsoever. Now, thankfully, as I said at the beginning, I did have a package arrive today that I might be able to address this with, so stay tuned till the end. Next up, I really dislike that there is no way to scroll both up and down, despite there being four buttons. In my opinion, that is inexcusable. I understand that this left button is dedicated to the backlight, which means it is handy to set it in the dark, but we can only scroll up. Let's say I wanted to go back to 9am, I'd have to scroll all the way along to get there, which this button can be quite painful on the finger, and if you overshoot it, you have to keep going. And by the way, the bottom button, which you'd expect to scroll down, simply exits you out of setting it. And this next issue is one that I actually changed my mind on since the unboxing video, and that is to do with these straps. I started off thinking, oh boy, these are my favorite type of straps. You might remember that I said, like the A700W. To be clear, that is my favorite and comfiest strap type. I do love that. But the way it was implemented on this humpback was so poorly executed, and I'll show you why. It really is not secure at all. And secondly, there's only certain areas that you can clamp it down. I found with the Casio ones, you can clamp it anywhere, but this one, you have to clamp it between one of these two sections. I also found that it is extremely slippery and insecure. What actually happened is, guys, I did wear this to volleyball. I did. I wore both watches to double wrist. And what I found was that when I was actually in the warm-up phase before the round actually started, I noticed that this watch began slipping off. When I'm tensing my hands to hit the ball, that was enough to slide this down. And I knew that if I continued to play while wearing this watch, it would have burst off, okay? So I did end up taking this off when I played volleyball. So I am really hopeful that I can find a way to replace these straps and hopefully get rid of that ugly overhang with the lugs as well. Next up, it is the Nano Digi Temp. Everything about this feature is a fail. It sounds good on paper to be able to have the temperature on your wrist, but in practicality, it just doesn't work. What I found is that the sensor is never accurate, and that's because it is on your wrist constantly, which obviously, you know, your residual body heat heats it up and conflicts with the actual temperature. You know, I did also have a few times where I took it off and left it for five minutes, as it says in the instructions, but even then the temperatures were consistently higher than you would expect. And I don't believe it's reasonable to have to take this watch off for five minutes before reading the temperature. 
the lowest I ever saw it, check it out, I actually decided to put it in the freezer um, to see if that could, you know, how low it could go. I think it got down to about negative 10 and then it just says low, check it out, low, and then it will gradually heat up again. So the temperature sensor is real, although it is not practical whatsoever to look down at your wrist and know what temperature it is. Also, check it out. They didn't even stick the, the Nano Digi Temp logo on properly. See how it's all, you see that? It's crooked. You can see the white underneath there. So come on, humpback, get it together. Now, because of the issues I've had with the temperature sensor, I got curious and I started planning to open this bad boy up to see what it's like on the inside and whether that temperature sensor really is behind the fake grill. All right, but then check it out. How on earth am I supposed to open this? I've never seen a case back like this. There's no screws. You obviously can't twist it off. So let me know. Am I supposed to use like a screwdriver or a little spudger to try and pry this off? I'm not sure. All right, the time has come. We are about to open up my package that has arrived just today from AliExpress. And hopefully the little adapters that I've ordered will be available because I would love to take off these crappy straps and put on some, well, maybe a NATO. So let's get into it. Yep, there they are. Now these are 18 millimeter uh, little metal strap adapters. I did do a measurement uh, underneath here and I believe these are 18 mil So hopefully this is gonna fit now I do have my watch parts here. Although to be honest guys, I'm not actually sure how many um, Straps I'm gonna have that are compatible because these are 18 to 20 mil most of the time the straps that I order are 22 mil if that size so we'll have to see but first things first Let's see if these adapters even fit by the way, I've got a new spring bar tool that I've ordered from M Mobile. Um, it's pretty cool. It's got a little uh, watch hand remover at one end and then the little spring bar part, you can actually unscrew this um, and then flip it over if you wanted to use it as a pin remover tool. Okay, so pretty cool. That was easy. Okay, these crappy straps can get out of here. And let's see if these little adapters can come in clutch. Oh, what the? Man, I think these are plastic. I thought these were going to be made of metal. That's a disappointment. Oh, well, let's see if they'll fit. Oh, well, it's a fit, guys. Now let's see if I can find a 20 millimeter strap. It's an 18, 22. Oh, there we go. Ooh, yeah. That might be good actually. That could match the orange. Yes, let's give this a try. So, you know, ideally that will be nice and straight. Hang on. But as we fold it down, that little knob is pressing into there and putting pressure. Look what's happened. The little knob has already snapped off this little spring bar. I knew I heard something fall off, but I think this one, oops, this one's still got the little knob on there. Oh yeah, it's my mini toolkit, the EDC kit, which you can check out here if you missed that review. And we have my little Nipex Cobra minis just here. It should just be a matter of grabbing that and snapping it off. Awesome. Are you ready guys? Boom! Introducing the new Rebel Pilot. I for one am super pleased with how this turned out with its elastic comfy orange nylon strap which matches the little dial on the face. What do you think? Let me know below. I'd also like to know your thoughts on double wristing in general. Do you think it would be embarrassing and if you tried it, what were your experiences? Please let us know. A massive thank you to our Goat Crew channel members for supporting the channel, you absolute legends. And here's a link to our Discord channel where I created the Double Wrist Week Challenge channel for us to discuss our findings there. Come and join us. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next review.